Hey everybody, Ransom here from the P3. We are going to have a jam-packed show coming up in just a few seconds. Uh, but before we start off, as every wrestling fan I'm sure knows, uh, this week the wrestling community lost one of the greats. Pat Patterson passed away, and uh, you know for the wrestling community that's a big uh, that's a big hit. Pat Patterson not only you know was a WWE Hall of Famer. This guy was a trailblazer, first ever Intercontinental Champion, to all the work that he's done to cultivate new talent over the years, build new guys up. A lot of the people that we enjoy today were directly influenced and coached by Pat Patterson. The man has done a lot, uh, not to mention uh, his ability to transition from an amazing in-ring talent to a very fun character in the ring as one of the stooges for the evil Mr. McMahon character. Pat Patterson really did have it all when it comes to wrestling. And, uh, you know, even if he wasn't super involved in wrestling these, these past few years, he definitely leaves a void. Um, there's not really one way that this type of legend can be, can be replaced. So, not that anybody involved with Pat Patterson will ever listen to the P3, but we would, out of respect, like to express our condolences to the friends and family of Pat Patterson, a true legend in the wrestling business. Rest in peace. You're listening to The Pittsburgh Piledrivers. Podcast. Hello, it's P3 time. The Pittsburgh Pod Driver Podcast is live to tape, as we want to do, allegedly. We'll see how long that, that actually happens. But that's an internet problem, not a wrestling problem. So we're not going to talk about it. We are, though, going to talk about a shit ton of stuff. It's going to be probably one of the most jam-packed Pittsburgh Powered Over podcast episodes that we've had in a very long time. We have uh, Love and Thunder uh, picks. Uh, no, War Games. We have War Games picks to go through. We have to talk about AEW Dynamite. Good Lord, we have a new AEW champion. I have never been happier to have been more wrong in my assumptions on that. We have the potential for an AEW impact, maybe even a New Japan crossover. There's a lot of shit going down. Uh, good Lord. We have, we have one of the most iconic people ever debuting in AEW, freaking coming out of nowhere. None of us realized what was happening. We didn't hear any spoilers. How they kept it so under the rug, I will never know. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about, so I'm going to stop flapping my jowls, and we're going to dive into some stuff. Boys, this has been an incredible, uh, yet tragic week for wrestling. It is true. It is true, and that was a very fitting tribute. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ransom. Uh, for, uh, for 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 eloquently putting it, uh, you know, Pat Patterson was, uh, you know, as you mentioned, trailblazer in more ways than one, um, and 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 we can't really even start to dive into the fact of him being, um, I, he was either I think homosexual, bisexual, one or two, but being one of the first guys in the locker room to kind of be that. Um, you know, that in and of itself is, 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 is a huge fucking thing. So, um, you know, God rest easy, rest easy, Mr. Patterson. Uh, you know, that was, you, you, you had an amazing career and, you and know, the, a lot of people have, were, 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 were at your feet for sure. The, the tribute that they did on NXT was perfect, was perfect for Pat Patterson. Like, yes. you know what I mean? It it wasn't, it didn't feel pedantic. It didn't feel forced or over the top. It felt just right. Like, and it was, and it was so true. And you know what? I remember, I, I don't know about you guys, but like, uh, the, like I mentioned on, on the fast count news that I did, like, I remember Pat Patterson as the, as the, the stooge, you know, with Gerald Briscoe. 
and the the looking back on it now through through the eyes of a, a more seasoned fan and someone who knows more about the the business and and Pat Patterson's contributions like being able to look at that and go wow to to be that kind of legend and have that kind of pedigree and be able to put yourself in situations like that and go with it and roll with it and have fun with it is not something that a lot of people do. You know what I mean? Oh, like, 100%. It's a lot of people that are have have that lineage wouldn't quote unquote debase themselves doing. But he, you looking back on it now, looking at like highlights from that time in the attitude era, you could tell that him and Gerald Briscoe were just having a ball. Oh, absolutely. And I'm telling you, like if if Legends House already wasn't a huge fucking tearjerker because of Roddy Piper, like now, you know, having Pat there too, um, you know, I, I I love Legends House and I, I will forever die on this hill. I think that Legends House was a great show and I would love to see more of it. Some of it was kind of hokey jokey. Some of it was kind of like, you know, forced like, you know, challenges and things. But, you know, they they, they, they beat they, – they all, like, kind of moved to the beat of their own drum, which was great. Um, so I, I would love to see that. But, I mean, like, that show really gave you a glimpse into, like, who these people were, not just, you know, under the bright lights, but also, like, who they were as people. Right. And um, it, 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 it really – it, you know, it, it really resonated with me to be able to see, you know, childhood heroes in in that in that capacity. Um, but yeah, it humanized them. With it each humanized other too. Them. Oh my god! Oh my god! Whenever um, at, at one point, Hacksaw and and Roddy Piper had like a real strong bond, and Piper was off doing something for like a day or so, and like Piper and uh, and uh, Duggan was just like a kind of a a, a dog without his master. He's kind of wandering around, not sure what to do. It was, you uh-huh. know. <laughs> It was very special to be able to see those guys like completely kind of shed the robes, as it were, and uh, yep. and and be loose. It, it was great, but yeah, no, uh, not to not to uh, not to bury the headline, but yeah, you know, re- re- rest in peace, Pat Patterson and WWE did a fine job with a with an amazing tribute. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. Um, so we're gonna switch gears on a total one eighty and uh, jump into our war games predictions or as ransom like to call it NXT Love and Thunder. Um <laughs> I, I, I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's gonna be my shtick. I'm just gonna <laughs> re- refer sh- to upcoming pay per views and picks that we have to do by completely wrong names. <laughs> NX, and, NXT Ragnarok. And 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 it's funny because like these, you know, NXT and, and AW events are the ones that we truly, truly, truly care about, and, and we'll watch with like captivated, you know, eyes versus like the Summer Slams or the Survivor Series where we'll be kind of oh. jagging each other and whatnot. Like oh. these, it's, it's it's just funny to me. Um, so a lot of these matches are very much up in the air. Uh, I there to me. There's not to me. There's not one match that I come down with as an absolute certainty. So I think that we're gonna see some uh, some chaos happening here, and uh, TLC may bail me out here later this month. But we'll see. Is that are those the only two that we have this month? Yas, yas. I was gonna suggest uh, picking. I I was gonna suggest picking uh, Winter is Coming last night, but I would have smoked all of you. So, um, Uh, uh, in fact, I, I. I almost put up a video on Tuesday night, uh, but I forgot staking my title, uh, staking the Choose Away Championship on the line about Kenny Omega winning that title last night. That's how Ooh. fucking certain I was. Dude, it was. It, um, yeah, I would have lost. Was, it was meant. It was meant to be. Like you know what it the, was. Thi- the thing is, I knew. I I kind of knew. There were three, th- two things that kind of made it cinch in for me that he was going to win that belt. Hold on. Hold on. We'll we'll get to that. All right. Write all right. them down. Fair. Pack no. pack them away. Yep. Um all right. So war games. Let's jump in. In a strat match, uh which I think is our third gimmick match of the last like month. Uh we're going to see uh. Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes. Um I well, to be fair, uh I'm glad that Wow, nobody. Uh, I'm glad that they didn't do the blindfold match because I thought that they were going to lead up for the blindfold match for this event, and I was like, "Oh fuck, yeah, let's do a blindfold match in they front of 15 already, people." Though. They did, they did, and and it was 
predictably bad, but whatever. You yeah, know, I, it's, I, it's a goof. It's a shtick. Like it's not yeah, an actual blindfold match. matches are stupid anyway. Yeah, I, I get it, but I, I've always hated them. Anyway, Grimes versus Loomis in a strat match. Uh, champions prerogative. I choose to go first here, and I am picking Cameron Grimes to the moon. Poot. Oh, I'm, I'm agreeing with the champ here. Cameron Grimes all day long. Ransom? Cameron Grimes. It, to the moon. To the moon. Dude, I, I think, I think, last P3 episode of this year, we should pick next year's official uh, P3 wrestler. And I think my vote might be for Cameron Grimes because he's just, every time he comes on camera, I smile. Like, I'm just like, I'm he is, he, he, so good. He's he's a he's a scene eater, man. Like, he, he literally chews the scenery. Like, when he comes on, you're like, like, th- he was basically what Keith Lee was for the two years preceding his terrible, terrible main roster. Uh, oh. You know, what have you. Ugh. Or what, uh, I'll tell you who else is catching my attention now, now that we're never kind of de- de- departing for a moment. Will Hobbs. Will Hobbs is doing a real good job of making me care about him as of late. Yeah, dude. Um, moving on. Uh, in a recently booked match, uh, Timothy Thatcher versus Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, this is going to be an exquisite match, I feel. I, I think I like that these two are going to go pretty hard. Um, and uh, given the technical acumen of both men, I expect nothing less than at least a four-star match. Pootski, who you got in this one? Dude, this is tough because I feel like I f- it, I, I'm, I'm of two minds, and I'm not going to dole on this too long because I know we have a lot of other stuff to talk about. But the thing is, I go, well, they need to protect Ciampa because I feel like Ciampa is going to be a player – a big player going forward. Um, but then on the other hand, I go, well, Ciampa can eat all the pins in the world and still be fine. Um, not to the extent that Balor could, but he can. Um, this is tough for me, but I think, I think I'm going to go with Ciampa. And it's so close in my mind. I really want to say Thatcher because it seems like they're really investing in Thatcher. But I feel like Thatcher's time is not now. All right. I feel like there's more in the chase for Thatcher. Ransom? Thatcher. I am picking Ciampa because uh, when Thatcher originally came on the scene, I'm like, man... They're not going to let this guy eat any pins. He's going to just smoke people. And he's eaten a lot of pins. And surprisingly, still has a legit presence as a tough guy. So, uh, yeah, I think barring them setting Thatcher up for some sort of main event run, which I don't think they're going to do, because i got to believe that carrying a cross is getting real fucking close. Um, I, uh, I I believe Ciampa will win as well. That. That's why I said, like, you, you kind of got to keep Ciampa strong for whenever Cross comes back. And right. I, I will Only say this, Cross though. Dominate him again. <laughs> the way that Thatcher manhandled uh, uh, Ciampa and choked him out, that was nasty. That made me go, holy shit. Yeah. Like, and I mean, we're going to talk a lot about AEW coming up. I, I don't want it to get lost that I think that NXT was a perfectly serviceable and a pretty good program last night, too. Oh, it was, it was, uh, yeah, but I mean, look what it was going up against. Oh, you know? yeah, for sure. And, and I think that they knew that. Oh. And plus, it's, it's, it, it's a go home show. Go home shows are always traditionally like pretty well stacked or, you know, kind of fluffed out a little bit, knowing that they're bringing it hard. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that this was the latter. But again, I, I really enjoyed what I saw last night. So, um, the North American title match, triple threat rules, which who knows what the fuck that means this week. Um, <laughs> Leon Leon Ruff, which is the uh, the uh, incumbent champion, versus Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano. Ransom. Uh, Leon Ruff. So, I like Leon Ruff, I do, but I don't think he's there yet. Uh, I think that this is the way to get the belt back on Priest. 
um, which <laughs> should have fucking never left after he won at the uh, NXT Boston or what was supposed to be NXT Boston SummerSlam weekend. Uh, I think that he just should have fucking held that title for a long ass time. I think that this rates that ship, and I think we see Damian Priest, uh, you know, getting a victory over Gargano. What do you say, Poot? I really, really was thinking uh, Gargano for this one because I feel like he's going to sneak away with it somehow. I feel like the tension between Leon Ruff and um and Damian Priest are are going to be is going to be a factor um and I feel like Champa or not Champa my god Gargano uh is going <laughs> to kind of play to that and steal it back and then mm. very quickly lose it again and they're going to keep pushing this idea that like Gargano can win it but he can't keep it and it's the curse, you know, because they made a big stink over that. I mean, but this belt has done a really good job of not being hot potatoed until, like, this year. Now it's literally like a fucking, like, grenade. Like, no one wants to hold on to it for more than a and week. The, it, it, and the other thing is, too, I think, we, like, I, I hate to say this, even though he's he's the incumbent champion. I feel like Ruff is there to eat that pin. Like, I do. Maybe. Um, I, man, this is a hard one to pick. Um, I know I just argued really hard for Gargano. You know what? Just to make it interesting, cause we're doing, it's a triple threat. I'm going to go with Gargano. All right. Yes. Make it interesting uh, for the P3 maniac. Hey, uh, hey, we have another listener who has submitted a question for us on it that we will get to. So we have at least two people who listen, at least occasionally, or at least watch Ransom's video and and uh, and uh, have 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 listened to his pleas for questions. Do um, we though? <laughs> do we though? Um, women's War Games. Uh, it is Team Shotzi, which is Shotzi Blackheart, Ember Moon, Io Shirai, and Rhea Ripley versus Team Candice LeRae, which is Candice LeRae. Um, Tony Storm, Re- uh, Raquel Gonzalez, and who's the fourth member? I'm going to hate myself whenever I uh, remember it. Oh, Dakota Kai. Uh, and in this, I am taking the face women. I'm taking Team Shotzi because, like, to, that's that's like the end-all, be-all of NXT talent uh, for women. Like, that's like, you know, a, a list of the who's who of, of NXT, so... I don't. I don't think that the team shots can cannot come away with a victory. Poot. Uh, I'm also going to go with Team Shotzi Blackheart. The build to this has just been all set up to make them look like a million bucks, and to make them the the um, the underdogs. Like it. It just. It, it, and to make them like when they come out on top, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be hard fought, and they they will have earned it, and they will be validated. Um, plus Shotzi is debuting a new tank and that's always fun. Uh, so I'm going to go with team face. Ransom team Shotzi across the board. Interesting. All right. Uh, in the men's war games, we have, uh, for the brand, which is Pat McAfee, McAfee, damn it. Oh, Pat damn McAfee. You. And I know, I know a big McAfee mark too. That's that's what that's what really upsets me. McAfee. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm I'm just I'm just bad with names. He's just Pat thinking about McAfee. what he's gonna drink tomorrow morning. McAfee. No, I I hate that shit. Uh, Pat McAfee, uh, Oni Lorcan, Danny Birch, and Pete Dunn versus the Undisputed Era, who shall go nameless, but we know who they are. Uh, Putski, your pickski. Man, I know the Era redebuted. And I know that for the brand, like won the um, the advantage and everything. I don't see a reason. I don't. I, I and this is going to sound terrible because I'm a huge undisputed era mark. I don't see a reason for the era to win. Like maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so I'm going with Team Pat uh, McAfee. I'm going with uh, for the brand. Ferda Ransom. 
Uh, I think Team Brand is going to win. But I like Undisputed Era, so I'm picking them. <laughs> okay. I don't hold out much hope for December as far as the Choose Away title goes, so if I'm all over the place or completely wrong, I'm okay with it. Uh, I am picking the Undisputed Era because I was definitely, like, I even had Florida Brand written down and I, and I, and I scribbled it out because I, I'm like, man, it, it'd be weird to have both face teams win the war games. Um, but, uh, the, Is here, McAfee here's a face? No. No. No, not at all. Okay. Um, here's what swayed oh. me. The only thing that swayed me. And I've been fucking chomping on this harmonica for the last year and a half. I think that this is the end of the Undisputed Era. I At least in NXT. Uh, and, and I really hope I'm wrong. But, like, this is their Everest, man. Like, this is the last mountain they have to climb. Because while we associate the Undisputed Era with war games, guess what? The Undisputed Era has never won a war games match. Despite being in both of the previous ones, they've never won one. I think that this is their year that they win one, they put their mark, their legacy on NXT, and, I mean, you know, what else is there to do after that? You got on your Sad. back, man. <sighs> yeah, but they're not going out, though. They're going up. Also, Undertaker. No. Um, also the, what? The biggest fucking Undertaker. The biggest fucking legend star in this business. Uh for my money, at least the longest, and uh, he 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 went out not on his back. So, you know, fuck that role. Um, so I'm picking SP there. So really quick to run down, we are across the board on Grimes. Putin, I picked Champa. Ransom picks Thatcher. I picked Priest. Putin picks Bar Gargano. Ransom picks Ruff. Uh, Putin, I picked Team Shotzi. Actually, we we're across the board on Team Shotzi, and. Uh, Ransom, I must have a kayfabe break there. Ransom and I picked the Undisputed Era. Poot picked Florida Brand. Uh, we don't know Tom's picks yet because he's going to phone them in later on this weekend. Gentlemen, it is that time again. Last call for Alki Hall. Who wants to switch? Anybody? Any takers? I'm good with mine. I'm locking the sons bitches in. I'm I'm, I'm happy, Poot. The big sigh. The big sigh. It's the big sigh. I think I had the big sigh during the last picks, where I was trying to talk myself out of something, and then I no, wound up changing it. My, the reason, the thing that I'm most flip floppy on, is um, is the the men's war games, because I I beef. You make a very salient <gasps> point. The era never won one. Um, however, I, I, I think in my mind, the reason that I chose for to brand, um, is because if you are going to have the era go, why not have for the brand? Because it's still, look, Pat McAfee did a really good job. He did a really, really good job in his 1v1 against Adam Cole. Now, to be fair, he had Adam Cole being able to kind of hide his flaws. But McAfee did a great job. We we all agreed on that. I think the wrestling yeah. world kind of agreed on that. Um, and to validate them as the next stable. And I know Pete Dunn's playing the hard ass, like the heavy of the group. But, like, he looks like he's like, how did I land here? Like, <laughs> and it, well, it's, well, we actually know how. It's because of the injury that, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Yeah. Yeah. The, the footballer, I forget his name, too. Oh, That's I'm terrible. terrible. And it's not because I'm, I'm like, he's forgettable. He's not. I just, because he was around for a cup of coffee. Um, but, the the I just think it it makes sense because then McAfee can hold over the fact that he beat Adam Cole. Now I'm the best. Now we're the best. You know what I mean? I told you. Then um, he becomes Pat McAfee, baby. 
Yeah, like it's that's the thing is like it makes sense. I want Air now. Don't get me wrong. I want Undisputed Era to win. I really do. You know what? I'm gonna lock mine in. I'm not gonna change. It was my it was my thought process. I'm gonna go with it. It has not led me to a new chooser weight title reign in a while, but you know what? We're gonna go with it. All right, uh, top to bottom though. I mean, it, lo- it looks like a great card, just like um, just like uh, Full Gear did. Uh, so I'm excited to see it. And you know these these cards when you don't have championships on the line are almost as fun as the ones that you do and sometimes can be more fun because there's, you know, less at stake but more at stake. And let's be honest, fucking war games, you know? Like, war games is an amazing fucking thing. I I love the war games, and I'm so glad that they brought that concept back. And I'm glad that AEW is toying with it too. Uh, They're just waiting until they can get either a bigger venue or bigger fans because, remember, that's what the – the uh, uh, the the football field match was supposed to be was supposed to be a war games blood and guts match, and uh, they changed it because they um, you know COVID. But yeah, I I, I I I love the war games, and I'm and I'm I'm all for seeing them everywhere. I'm, let's do let let's do war games all over. I'm very hyped for it, man. War games, every war games has been fun, and Ooh, this yeah. one is no different, especially with you know guys like. It, with the matches like Cameron Grimes and um, uh, Dexter Loomis, yeah, Dexter. Lo- Thank you, good lord. Got we record this when when I'm just like mentally exhausted. Um, uh, Dexter Loomis, and, and, and and especially because NXT has basically been handed the bitch card, saying, "Hey, bitch, how you doing?" By AEW, like you know, AEW served them up a big, fresh pie, a slice of humble pie. And now I think it's time for uh, b- between full gear and uh, winter is coming. Last night, I think that NXT has to respond in a big way. Well, and the thing is, NXT could have avoided this by having NXT on Saturdays or on Tuesdays. Like, yep, they could have easily avoided it. I'm to just be saying. fair. To be fair, they it, it was their spot. Thank you. And we're done. And we're done. Uh, uh, bastard. Uh, this this was their spot. Like, they, they were right. Like, they, you know, hey, we were on Wednesday nights first. Yes, they weren't there for two hours. And yes, they were only localized on the network. And no, they weren't live. But it was still, you know, NXT was on Wednesday nights. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I still I still fall on you know, it's six one away half a dozen on that because yeah I think I think that a little bit was TNT saying hey, let's see how they can do up against competition, um, but yeah I mean I I I get what you're saying but regardless, this is exactly what we want. This is exactly what we wanted when we when when we first heard the news about Dynamite happening last year and NXT, you know, gaining a, a show in USA with two hours every week. Like, our minds immediately went back to Raw versus Nitro in 1998, 1999. And th- this is exactly, then that's exactly how it's playing out. You know, big matches, uh, big surprises, awesome cards, and you know, just, just, just really memorable experiences the whole way around from both sides of the aisle. So, I mean, I, everybody went in here, really. Now, look, speaking of memorable experiences, we need to dive into Winter is Coming, AEW yep. Dynamite from last night, because that was a blockbuster of an event. I, mm-hmm. All right. So I don't lose my point. Uh, just from earlier, before we got into picks. Yeah, hit it. Yeah, we the, can jump right into the title change. Let's, the, let's start there. It's a good place to start. First of all, the title change, Yes. When they announced this, Beef called it because it immediately was sus. It was. It was like, so they're doing this match on free TV on the thing. I'm like, this, it's one of those things you're like, okay. But then the fact that they called it, you know, you know, AEW Dynamite Winter's Coming. It's like, okay, this is going to be special. And then the two things before the title match that made me go, 
all right, tonight is special. And the first one you can argue with me on was the battle royal that they had. Orange Cassidy came out on top. Sure, sure, long term, maybe just maybe, there were other picks that might have been a little more prudent. However, hold on. Uh, 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 oh, that was weak as shit. Almost threw up. The, um, well, I, I'm not as good of it. You're the master burper here, Cowboy. The master. I see what makes you people cheer. Your booze mean nothing to me. <laughs> the wow. But so, my my point is, Orange Cassidy. I said this before because yeah, he had the win over Jericho in the in the mimosa match. But like he ate a pin to someone that we were like, wow, they're gonna do this to Cassidy. Um and it was one of those things where it's like AEW, every time someone gets on a run and then takes a loss, it feels appropriate to where it kind of knocks them down the mountain and then they have mm-hmm. to crawl back up. It feels good. Like it's a good yep. thing when someone loses because then you're more invested in them because it's not in AEW. It's not when someone loses a match, they're they've lost favor with the back office. It's for a reason. And whenever Cassidy won that, because you look at the the talent that was in that match, pretty much, for the most part, I would say 80% of the people that were in that match feasibly could have won that and had it been believable. The thing with this was, I went, Cassidy won. They're going to start building him again for something. I don't know what. Maybe to face Darby Allen. Maybe to, you know... Or, or like after Darby Allen loses it, then he'll have a run at the TNT Championship. Something, maybe even running at the world uh, world title again. But I went, all right, cool, that's good. And I was like, all right, this is a good night. This is going to be a fun night. And then, of course, and I I, I want to lead into this. Of course, after that tag match, we had the debut. Completely unspoiled. No rumors, nothing, which is refreshing in this day and age. The Stinger himself, the icon, debuts for AEW. What? I I loved it, man. And and uh, because when we were all watching, and we, we were all watching together, and I, and I like doing that because I, I like gauging people's reactions. Everybody's mind was blown. Like, we all were like, oh, oh, oh it's going to be fucking Glacier because of the winter and the snow and everything. And, I mean, it literally felt like Glacier. Uh, but, yeah, fucking Sting. Out of nowhere. Yep. Um, and, and it felt like a big deal moment. And, and fucking Tony Schiavone. It's Sting! Like, you know that that had to take him back to fucking 1999. Well, and, then, and, you know, give his give his fucking goosebumps goosebumps, you know? And you heard, yep. you heard it in JR's voice. And this is why I felt like it wasn't puffery. JR said, I feel like I'm 20 years younger or something like that. He said like 20 or 30 years younger. Or he said, it makes me feel young again. That's what it was. And he sounded like the JR of old. Like he really did. He sounded genuinely excited. Like it, that and- was cool too. To keep to keep something like that under wraps in this day and age, the boys didn't even know. The boys and girls in the back, the Bucks, uh, the Bucks gave an interview today, and they talked about how how great it was seeing the boys and girls mark out because they kept staying by himself in a trailer in the back. No one but like you know the the who is who knew he was going to be there. Yeah. Um, and uh, and obviously the people involved in the match. Uh, so like when they brought him out for his debut. They said that they grabbed the security and they walked him down the hallway and he was like tunnel vision. But like people like all over the fucking hallways were like a gog and mouth drop and they're like, holy shit, I can't believe this is happening. Like, you know, it, it took them back and, and it took everybody back to fucking Nitro, 1999. You know, Sting finally comes down from the Raptors and beats the shit out of Hulk Hogan with the bat. You know, like. It's, I, it's Sting is such an icon. Of this business, and I and I know that that's his fucking tagline, but like he is just he he is, um, I think the the opposite side of the coin of the Undertaker, uh, maybe yes. not quite as like you know uh, prolific, 
but like you know he was a dude who did things his own way it's... whereas mark calloway you know beat walked to the beat of vince mcmahon's drum for 30 years sting literally did it his own way and he did what he wanted to do and proved that you can become a marketable abject success without vince mcmahon in this industry well and and the other thing is that sting and and it's it's that character first of all is there's something special about that character look at any iteration or any generation of that character even going back to surfer sting fight me mm-hmm. like there was something special about the character however just like with the undertaker and i think this is where the parallel draws and why people have made this you know you said two sides of the same coin it's because no one could do that character better like it it had it was the right person at the right time with the right situation and who who made it long lasting and evolved with it even some of the low points even through injury or whatever he remained just something special it's that x factor that mm-hmm. you have and and, and as that, much as we talk about the i'm sorry but what but it it's it's the fact that even now after being inducted into the wwe hall of fame retiring during his speech and you know kind of riding into the sunset even now when he comes back you have not heard word one about anyone saying Oh, no wrestlers really retire. Of course, he's coming back out. He must need money or anything. No, you have the bulk of people out there saying, holy shit, Sting is back. And then and then you have you have like a small contingency of people that are going, if WWE did it, then you guys would be complaining. Not with Sting. This isn't like well, Goldberg. Like, you know. So that's an interesting point to delve into. And I, and I do want to talk about that. But real quick, I do want to mention. And, 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 and I know that we're kind of, you know, sucking on Sting's dick here. But that's fine. Because we talk about how Jericho and The Undertaker have stayed relevant for 30 years. With recreations of their character. And Pooja mentioned, you know, Surfer Sting. And obviously the iconic Crow Sting and Wolfpack Sting. But I mean, I, I, to me, I, I think what really uh, evolved Sting in the process were his TNA stints, or his stint with TNA, where he was both um, like crazy Joker Sting and also a member of Fortune um, with uh, like AJ Styles and Bobby Roode, like, you know, with like the and fucking Samoa suits and Joe. shit. And Samoa Joe. Um, like, with the suits and shit, like, you know, they, and even the main event Mafia, even, uh, although that was kind of a poorly run angle. But the, the bottom line is, like, he recreated himself time and time again um, to really kind of make it work. So, I mean, kudos to Sting uh, for, for, for continuing to just shock people and, and, and bring out, you know, the mark in all of us. Ransom, you talk now. So I have two points that I want to touch on here with this. One good and one you can go fuck yourself. Uh, We'll start with the good. The good was is that AEW really knew what they were doing with this debut. And I'm stealing some of these points from the Busted Open podcast from Bully Ray um, because they made salient points and I agree with them. So I'm going to talk about it here. Do you remember Beef? Right at the beginning of this match uh, between uh, Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen. No, uh, them tagging against two. Uh, it was uh, the, oh. the Taz's the the Taz bunch. It was yeah, um, Will Hobbs Taz. and uh, and uh, Ricky Starks. Yeah. So right at the beginning of that match, like right after the intros, they went to commercial break. And I remember specifically about that match. I remember you saying, "Boy, that's a weird spot for them to go to commercial at. That just seems weird." Do you remember that? I do. So AEW knew what they were doing because they hit that commercial break and got that out of the way 
so that at the nine o'clock hour after that match, when they were going to have Sting's debut, they wouldn't need a commercial break there. So they knew what they were doing. Like they did that real smart. And to have Sting come out in that slow saunter that he did, not, you know, run in, hit the ring, baseball bat everybody. I feel like they were smart enough to say, you know what we want to do? We want to make this Sting entrance long and drawn out so that as soon as the word Sting showed up on the big screen, everybody was going to be Facebooking, twatting, Instagramming about Sting. Like it was immediately going to be out there. Everybody's going to be like, oh shit, Sting's on AEW, Sting's on AEW. That gave everybody who was watching NXT the opportunity to go, oh shit, Sting's on AEW, I got to switch over. And when they switched over, they still had enough time for Sting to still be going to the ring. So it wasn't one of those things to where when you know it, it first hit the internet, by the time people switched over, they weren't catching the tail end of it. They were coming in still at the beginning when Sting was standing on the entrance ramp, slowly pulling out the bat, slowly, methodically walking to the ring. So they really had that planned out well to give everybody the opportunity to turn over and see the bulk of Sting's debut. Kudos to AEW for really having the forethought to put that together the way that they did. Secondly is the fuck you. Beef's biggest friend, the smarkiest of smarts on the internet, I saw post a thing that had a picture of Goldberg and said, when WWE does it, everybody's crutch, just like Poot said, everybody would do shit all over WWE when WWE brings back an old guy. Then on the bottom, they had a picture of Sting that says, when AEW does it, everybody fucking loves it. Blah, 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 blah. Nope. Comparing WWE bringing back Goldberg to AEW bringing back Sting is like going to a restaurant and getting a bologna sandwich versus going to a restaurant and getting a porterhouse. You can't make that comparison with any sort of justification. Yes, Goldberg was a big deal in the Nitro days, but he was a big deal until everybody found out, oh, he really isn't that great. When WCW stopped covering up his flaws, when they put him in matches to where it wasn't just clobber, 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 spear, jackhammer, pin, walk. When they tried to put him in legitimate matches to where it was long and drawn out, his flaws were obvious. Sting, by comparison, could have a three-minute match, which was amazing, or an hour-long match, which was amazing. The man would not miss a beat. So to compare bringing Goldberg back to bringing Sting back, I really don't see any comparison. Because if so, you would flip-flop it, if you would flip-flop it, and WWE brings back Sting, and Goldberg debuts on AEW, it would be just as big of a difference. People would be looking at AEW going, oh, AEW brought in Goldberg? You're kidding me. Well, to where if, if, w, if Sting, you know, re-debuts in WWE, everybody would be like, oh, shit, Sting's back. We thought he was retired. Sting's back in WWE. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It doesn't matter where Sting would have gone. It's a big deal because it's Sting. Because Sting has that legacy, has that talent. Everybody can go back and watch Sting matches and go, every single one looks amazing. He tells a great story every time he's in the ring as compared to a Goldberg where it's, oh, when you actually let him wrestle in a decently long match, you can see he's not great. Well, and well, and I think I'm but, sorry, go ahead, uh, no, just really quick. I was going to say, while beef uh, probably supports your answer here or uh, provides another another view, I'm going to pull up my response to said person because I think I answered it in response very uh very eloquently and with many salient points. This was the straw that broke the camel's back, by the way, 
So Matthew Jackson, if you're listening, this was the post that got you unfriended and blocked. Congratulations. Okay, well, I wasn't going to mention his name, but let's go ahead and kill him. <laughs> I've done it before. Bury him, I've bury him. I've 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 dropped his name very specifically before, but the the the, the problem is it's not incumbent it's it's not just him. He represents that like fucking 15% of the pie that are like so anti AEW that it just radiates off of them. Go ahead, Pooh, with he's, your response. He's the, he's the Jim Corn. He represents the Jim Cornette faction. Yes, yep. Where no matter exactly. what AEW does, it's, this is bullshit, motherfucker, I'll fucking kill you, you're ruining the wrestling business, Smoky Mountain, Smoky Mountain, fucking so, uh, Rock and Roll Express, but bing bong bang. There were, there were a couple other people who responded pretty fairly as well, you know, with like, oh, you know, I love AEW, but I'm not big on this or whatever. Okay, so here's how I answered him. I said, the reason why there are so few WWE apologists these days when it comes to legends is that WWE willingly and knowingly puts current popular talents on the chopping block for them, i.e. Goldberg v. Fiend, trading a quick nostalgia buck for long-term money. I then go on... To say, WWE never sees the forest through the trees. Wildly changing bookings at the last minute, treats and treats and treating their full-time talents poorly, and are consistently out of touch, always failing, to, uh, always failing to right the ship when clearly something isn't working. AEW, on the other hand, has an interesting way of utilizing legends and old-timers like Jake, Arn, Tully, and hell, even Jericho. Sure, when Jericho was crowned the inaugural champ, I was really gun-shy about it. But he didn't overstay his welcome, he had great matches, and when Mox took the belt, it felt big time. Plus, he has proven that he doesn't need the belt, or even a win for that matter, to be relevant. Because of all this, I'm willing and frankly hyped to see how AEW uses Sting. Of course I'm worried about his health, but... If he is in good shape and has minimal ring rust, let him help get this generation over and elevate them. Now, that last part, you might be saying, Poot, they're not going to let him wrestle. Frankly, knowing the type of injury he has, I hope they don't. Uh, unless he has had treatment and therapy to the point where doctors are like, you are good to go, sir. Then I say don't let him wrestle anymore. Like, I, I say put him in a position to mentor or be a uh, manager or be uh, an omnipresent, omniscient uh, kind of force. But if he is able to go, I mean, you know, why not? I think I answered that pretty evenly and without any kind of vitriol or yelling and screaming or anything like that. I agree. Because, honestly... That type. Vitriol, yelling and screaming is exactly the response they want. They are in the wrestling fandom to spread seeds of chaos and anger and hatred. As opposed to being supportive and, hey, hashtag all wrestling matters. They're being divisive wow. and hateful and just fucking... Troll is what they are. So I, I'm done. Um, and, and by the way, Poot, I, I would listen to you read a phone book, my friend. That was very eloquently read. Thank you. Um, let me say, whole, like let me say this real living. quick. Yeah, right? Let me say this real quick, too, about the possibility of Sting's in-ring career or future, I guess. If he is cleared to wrestle, it seems like, again, AEW, and really, this isn't AEW dick-sucking. It's calling out what they're doing smart Ooh. if they're setting him up for some sort of in-ring at least one match presence or whatever if he's going to have a match if he's cleared it feels like what they're setting up for with the way he debuted he went over and you know face to face with Arn Anderson face to face with Cody Rhodes face to face with Darby Allen to have a triple threat match, and I understand like it's like, oh, Sting, why a triple threat match? But with Sting's age, I think he's 61. With him being that old, 
and again, age is just a number. It's all about how you, you know, how your body is. But if they do a triple threat match, that gives all of the opportunity for Sting to be present in the ring, for Sting to have a five minute hot tag in, wrestle, 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 get out. He avoids injury. He avoids any sort of shown exhaustion. And if they do a triple threat match with, or uh, um, a six man tag is what I mean, six man tag with Darby Allen, Cody Rhodes, and Sting versus Team Taz, it can really do a lot to elevate these guys being in the ring with Sting. Um, it could do a lot for Darby Allen being on a team with Sting. And it gives Sting that opportunity to not only wrestle, but not have to go in a one-on-one -on -one match where A, a potential injury could happen, or B, show maybe any sort of ring rust or fatigue. Because if you do a six-man tag, like I said, he could be at the ring, he could be at the ready, hot tag in, sting, 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 singer splash, stinger splash, scorpion death lock, scorpion death drop, whatever. Wham, tag out. I really feel like if that's what they're setting up for, they have a plan for success. So, um, I, I think we would probably agree in saying that I'm the resident AEW mark. I'm the guy who watches week in, week out. I'm the guy who sings their praises. But I'm also the guy that can, you know, be realistic when it comes to the product and kind of take a step away and go, you know, what is this fair? So while by no means whatsoever, am I going to agree with that troll percent of the population because ransom hit the nail on the head. There's a big fucking difference between Bill Goldberg and sting. There's a big fucking difference between trotting Ric Flair out there in a suit looking all drunk and sting. Like, there's a big fucking difference between guys that we see all the fucking time show up for their fucking, you know, $1,500 check and sting. So, yes, that, that's not a fair or apt comparison. However, I do want to put some, uh, put uh, the, the, um, fuck, the, uh, the, the, the three dots in there and say, uh, ellipsis, uh, and say, that I reserve the right to come back and say this was a bad move. So once the excitement and the nostalgia wore off, and that took a few minutes, like a good five, ten minutes, my first thought was, oh, fuck, he's going to have a singles match with Cody. And, like, <clears throat> I, I, and, and again, people who listen to this podcast probably think, the four of you, probably think that, I hate Cody Rhodes. I don't hate Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is one of my favorite guys to watch wrestle. I don't like seeing Cody Rhodes be in like p big positions on a on uh, like pivotal positions on a card. Uh, I think that the Young Bucks and Omega have done a and Hangman have done a wonderful job with not doing that to themselves. I don't think I can say the same for Cody. I think that Cody has found himself in a lot of like pivotal spots on cards. So that's why my first fear was, oh fuck, we're going to get Cody, Cody versus Sting. So that, as long as they don't go down that path, I think we'll be okay. I would like to see Sting build an army. So here's the thing. Sting has inked a multi-year deal with, a with, with AEW. This is not going to be a one-shot appearance. Um, he is a multi-year. I don't think you link somebody to a multi-year deal without planning an in-ring return. Uh, and, and I don't think it needs to be... I'm okay if Sting wants to come back. Because at the end of the day, I got to trust Sting and the doctors of AEW who are making that call. And if they're saying it is safe for, I, I got to trust Steve Borden that he knows what's best for Steve and that he's not just going to go out there. I, I don't think he needs money. I really don't. No. Um, 
I, I, I think this is 100% oh, think him. Of mer- uh, not trying to interrupt. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but like he yeah. doesn't need money. Think of the merchandising from WCW and WWE. Think of the years he spent, the money he touts. Like, and he doesn't seem like a guy to be hasty with his money, let alone right. how he got to ride out his Turner contract. Oh, like, yeah. Come on. And speaking He's of merch, by cash. the way, he, he he broke the Pro Wrestling Tees one day record for merch sales. Really? Surprise, surprise. Yep. Yep. Wow. Today, they, they, he broke all kinds of records. Um, so I think that we will see him in the ring. Uh, maybe as much as a couple times a year. I think that this is going to be kind of like an Undertaker deal. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. Because again, if Steve Borden is making a conscious decision, I want to do this and I want to go out under my own power, more power to you. And as long as the doctors support that, awesome. And like so, I said, there's no way they, they they get in deep with him unless they're not planning on an in-ring return. Yes, I, I, think, I agree with that. I think that Ransom's right. I think that it will start as like a six-man tag match. Or even maybe being part of like the Blood and Guts match when they finally debut it, where you can save him to be the last entrant in, have him go in there, be a house of fire. And I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to see him fucking sting in war games? Come on. But um, like, I, I, I think you're going to see some spots for him. But at the end of the day... If, if we're talking multi-year deal, I think that they are kind of lining him up in an Undertaker role where you're going to trot him out there a couple times a year and he's going to be a fucking gatekeeper. Either you can get past Sting or you can't. And that's, and- you know, guys like Jericho, guys like, you know, um, Ricky Starks. I think that Ricky Starks would pull a hell of a match out of Sting. I, um, I th- You know who I'd like to see... Um, Obviously, Darby. You know that well, that, that goes without saying. But you uh, you know who I'd like to see in a match with Sting. I really and I, I I don't know how safe this would be for him because not saying they're unsafe workers by any stretch of the imagination, but their style is a little looser, so I'd be a little worried. I would like to see Sting in a match with Pentagon. Agreed. I'd like I think, to see I think Pentagon. That would be Sting. a great match. It'd be a great yep. match because I think Pentagon, and I stand by this statement, and I know what I just said. The Lucha Libre style tends to be a little more cavalier, but mm-hmm. not unsafe in the right hands. And what better hands than Pentagon Jr.? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, exactly. So I don't be, uh, oh, pardon me. Um, your hesitation with Sting versus Cody Rhodes, is that just having that match in general? Or is that you're worried about Cody going over clean on Sting? So, and 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 I've I've talked about this sentiment before. How I get a lot of Triple H 2002 to like you know current vibes from Cody Rhodes um, on on AEW, uh, and that's both an insult and like one of the highest compliments I can give somebody. Um. So, like, immediately I thought, well, you know, Triple H had a match with Sting, so why not Cody Rhodes? Um, I, I, you know, I, I just feel like... Yes? What? Are you there still? Did you, you go me? away, Beef? You cut out, but now you're back. Okay. Uh, no, uh, that, that was my first shotgun reaction. Is like, oh no... They're setting up big fucking thing where it's gonna like the pinnacle is gonna be Cody versus Sting. Um, once I saw that he's on a multi-year deal, that 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 fear kind of faded. Um, but yeah, I I legit think that he's and and you know what? If that's the case, if if as long as it's not a one-off, hell, I'm okay with Cody versus Sting. I mm-hmm. I think that would be a pretty good match, even though I you know I think it's Cody putting. Him, Cody putting Cody in a, in a in a in a wonderful position, um, you know. Cody Cody's kind of like the brand ambassador for AEW. God God love him. He does you know he he does everything he can to get that brand over. So I get it. But like my my initial fear was that it was just gonna all be one big thing to get Cody versus Sting, 
this thing was going to fade back into the fucking sunset. I don't think this is that. So I, so I think we're okay as far as that goes. So we could sit here all night and pontificate on what will be with Sting and, and how good Sting is and how good this is for AEW. But you know what else is good for AEW? Not only a new champion. Not, not saying Mox didn't do a good job, but a new champion in Kenny Omega. But the result of that championship win. Yes. Here so. is where I think AEW is being head over heels smarter than WWE. At the end of that match, you had Cyrus the Virus, old Don Callis, Impact Wrestling guy, helping Kenny Omega, or at least drawing attention away from Kenny, to help Kenny Omega win that match. Kenny Omega then flees the arena with Don Callis. Someone tries to get an interview in, and Don Callis says, you'll find out on Tuesday. The interviewer says, what do you mean? And Don Callis says, you'll find out Tuesday on Impact, on whatever the network it's on. Beef, what's the network? Access TV. Access TV. You'll find out then. So it was the, the interviewer was Alex. Uh, the, the interviewer, by the way, was that was Alex Marvez, who I think does probably one of the better jobs in the business of being an absolute dumb shill. He's like, "What are you talking about? What's on Tuesday night?" Like it was believable coming from Marvez because he's he, he acts like a big dumb idiot all the time. Go ahead, yeah. Ransom. So not only do you have on a big AEW Dynamite, an AEW Dynamite that they gave its own name to, Winter is Coming. They have mentioned, they, they flat out plug the network, the other wrestling show, and the night that it's going to be on. That's where you're going to get an explanation from the new AEW champion. So here's where I think AEW is, is doing things head over heels better than WWE. WWE exists in, they, they, they make reference to it all the time. The WWE universe. They exist in their own universe. To them, WWE is the universe. Everything else is outside of it. Anything in that universe is all WWE. Everything else is in a completely different solar system. AEW feels like they're really doing a lot to collaborate with other promotions. They had the NWA Women's Champion wrestle on one of their shows. They're having their champion do his first interview as champion. Kenny Omega didn't say a word after that match. So not only did he not speak, the first time he's going to speak as AEW champion is going to be on Impact Wrestling. I mean, well, so hell. shut up. I'm not finished. So you got channel my inner beef. Oh, um, the beef card. Yeah. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Poor Tom. Um, that's a Among Us Breaking Kayfabe callback. Go watch. Uh, AEW is doing this collaboration with, at least right now, two other promotions. There's speculation, at least among our group, that the mystery attacker who attacked John Moxley could be from New Japan Pro Wrestling. So there could be collaboration between AEW New Japan, AEW NWA, AEW Impact. These guys are collaborating with other promotions to share talent and to expand all of those brands. Where WWE is staying in their own little bubble. And even though, yes, WWE is the is quote unquote the big time, that universe will rapidly shrink. Not not you know, not their brand's not gonna die. They're not going to go under, but that WWE universe will shrink if other promotions expand and incorporate and share talent. That's a big, smart move. So, I don't know. I've got to say that AEW is making smart, smart moves. And, and once again, I... I I, th I think we're kind of burying the lead here because, yeah, like, I'm excited about the partnership with Impact, too, but I'm fucking, like, fucking midnight about 
Kenny Omega holding that belt because I don't think that there has been a guy better booked in 2020 than Kenny Omega. No, well, literally, literally if, you, if you look at the numbers in AEW. Well, th- literally, but also, I mean, like, the be- character. Before we go off on, on sucking Kenny Omega's dick really quick, I want to also say, Ransom, the the point that you made about that, hell, John Moxley signed with AEW and went oh. over to New Japan and won the Intercontinental belt over there. Nope, yeah. United States. Was it the United well, States? Oh, he thank won you. a New Japan belt. Let's put it that he way. He won a New Japan belt. Like, he was yep. the New Japan U.S. champ. Like, after he signed for AEW. So they've already gotten in bed with New Japan. So the it's not talent a sharing uh, is a genius idea. And it's only going to lead to expansion and more eyes on each of these products. Agreed. Now, be, and WWE is not going to do to be fair, Jericho and, and Moxley, AEW and New Japan have both said that Jericho and Moxley were like, you know, unique situations and circumstances that arose because of the, um, because of how everything kind of unfolded the way that they did with both of those talents. Um, but that being said, you know, obviously there is a a a um, a great prior relationship not just with the bucks and omega and hangman but guys like lance archer who got big in japan um and i'm hoping i pray to god it's bringing hopefully gonna bring guys like marty Skrull over guys like will osprey who i think you know american fans need to fucking understand and see and appreciate will osprey zach saber jr and God help me, Minoru Suzuki. Um, so yes, talent sharing is the best for everybody. Um, so real quick though, I, I I do you know yes, and, and I understand that there was a lot of shit going on with AEW last night, but I, I I really feel like that we need to give Kenny Omega his due here because like yes, he's been booked very well, but I think that he himself has played the part perfectly to go from like a guy who you thought was going to get turned on in the tag team title matches to being the guy who kind of treated the tag team matches as laissez faire to being the guy who's like, okay, Hagman, you're the problem. You're the wink link to being the guy who's like, I'm not doing tag team stuff anymore. I'm the cleaner. I'm Kenny fucking Omega and I'm back baby. Like he is doing a million percent of what he was doing in, in, in New Japan. And I think he's doing it better. Um, and, and it went down exactly like I thought. And I, and I think I even said it to you guys last night when, when you asked me about it. I said it's going to go down that Kenny Omega is going to win whenever he does something dastardly or dirty because of the whole gentleman's agreement. Um, you know, the whole no weapons thing. So it, it, it was a fitting end to the match. It was a great match for TV, for fucking pay-per-view, whatever. It was a perfect match, I feel. And uh, yeah, now we get to see what happens with Impact. Now we get to see what happens with NWA, with, you know, who knows what. I've So, earlier today, um, the, uh, the the Twitter account for AEW said, oh, hey, oh, oh hi, Impact Wrestling. And Impact Wrestling replied with "sup" with like gifts or clips. Guys like the North, guys oh, like uh, the, North the Motor City Machine FDR. Gun. Hold on, I'm getting there. The guy got those guys are like posting stuff and saying like at AEW, FTR. Um, I think I think Dax said no. Um, yeah, Dax yeah, said, Dax said uh, the North. The, the North. Cash said Motor City Machine Guns. Um. Yeah, I mean, this... And then um, Sammy Callahan was hinting at a potential John Moxley, you know, <laughs> reunion. I was going to so, say, that's 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 the dream match. I'm sorry, Sammy Callahan and John Moxley. <laughs> but, you know, yes, uh, Impact has a great stacked uh, uh, um, tag team division. And Impact could really benefit from some of the AEW's top guys going over for, the you know, the, the top guy division. But... What what I'm really salivating over is 
AEW getting its hands on some of the Impact Women's Division. Uh, we're talking people like Madison Rain, talking people like uh, Taya Valkyrie. Um, we're talking people like uh, Jordan Grace, um, even um, Deanna Parazzo. Like the Impact Women's Division, I think was doing leaps and bounds with women's wrestling before WWE ever caught on. And then when the whole like the, the whole women's movement thing happened uh, a couple years ago, like WWE really jumped on, and they just so happened to be featuring people that were really fucking good in the ring. Your Bailey, your Sasha's, your Becky Lynch's, your Oscars. But realistically, Impact had been doing that for three, four years prior. So, like to me, the Impact no. Knockouts division. Shut up. The Impact Knockouts division is something that I'm really excited to see cross up because if there's one uh if if, if if there is one flaw in AEW's armor, it is one hundred percent the women's division. So I think that this could be I, I didn't fucking mention uh Rosemary, like uh, shit man. Fuck. You know? Yeah, I'm excited. AEW can no, really oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. No. Uh, yep. Um, <laughs> um, AEW can really benefit from uh, the Impact Knockouts division, and if there's going to be content sharing, if there's going to be talent sharing, it, oh, there there could be so much elevation between brands. It's it's unreal. And the the thing is, I hope that this helps wash the stink of Impact's history away. Because the 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 talent over there, the men and women, have been trying so hard to put on a really good product. And with especially the talent that they have now on their roster, the people who are passionate, the people who chose Loose. to stay there. I mean, you have Moose, you have Sammy Callahan, Motor City Machine Guns. Like you said, the North. The North is awesome. Um, yep. Like, th this whole roster is full of people that are hungry and wanting to make better where they're at and for themselves and for others. I think it's because everywhere except WWE goes, we want to make wrestling better. We don't want to just make more money for an old crotchety man who doesn't understand his ass from a hole in the ground. Like they, they, they want people to enjoy wrestling again, no matter where they go. And AEW is making all these strides to make that happen. And I think so real quick, I'm sorry, I got boot. Nope. You're good. No, I was just going to mention, uh, so Impact... They're good. A, a, a lot of people They're use good. Impact as a punching bag. <laughs> a no, lot of so, people use Impact oh, yeah. as a punching gut bag. Well, and, and to be and fair, I mean... They they had some missteps. Hogan, Nash, Bischoff, mistake. Misstep. Jeff Hardy, mistake, misstep. Like, Jarrett, mistake, misstep. Yes, it's true. Now... And I think for the last several years, they've had some great talent. The problem is their production sucks. Like, their audio sucks. Their cameras, it's bad production. And that's something that AEW has in spades. So even if it's like, you know, sharing notes and being able to help somebody get to that next level, fucking A, you know, compares, man. Like, that's what it's all about. You are 100% right, Poot. Let's make wrestling better. Like, let's not focus on a monopoly. Let's make wrestling better. I will point out, though, I don't know if you guys saw Triple H's uh, comments from the uh, the the um, the, uh, the the conference call for aid for uh, War Games, uh, Love and Thunder. But um, the uh, he said, and there, there were a couple real big talking points that I would love to get into, but I don't think we're gonna have time tonight. Um, but he said that NXT WWE is open for business with working for other people, 
if it makes sense for them in a business sense. Which I think, to be fair, is true. Evolve and WWE have had a pretty mutual partnership, or at least Evolve and NXT have had a pretty mutual uh, partnership uh, the last couple of years. Um, so I I don't think WWE... Sh- sh- um, I, I don't think they 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 stray away from it, but or 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 at least Triple H. I'll put it to you like that. But I I also think that Triple H is thinking about it, no pun intended, from his throne. Like he's like, okay, how is this going to benefit WWE? At the end of the day, how it's going to benefit WWE is you guys becoming a feeder system to us. You guys giving us all of your top talent, and us giving you a place on our network to, ho- to 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 house your shows down the line, or us lending you big talent every so often. So that's not, you know, that that, that is not, um, you know, working together. That's 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 not cohesion. That is being no, a. That's leech. what Vince did back in the in the territory days. Yeah. That is that is being a leech and sucking the lifeblood out of something and pretending that you're creating homeostasis. Well, and listen, we've said that H is the more reasonable one, and I really think, and, and again, I know this is starting to sound more and more morbid as we say it, I really believe once Vince is gone, things are going to change. And also, if the entire rest of the wrestling zeitgeist changes like changes and it's like no we work with each other we support each other we do these things tactically and we're trying to make all of us better wwe eventually will feel the sting of that and eventually will have to play ball the right way now it's going to take a long time because they have a lot of money and they have a lot of history and yeah they're going to want to be they're going to want to come out better than the other person. But eventually, on a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. Unless, you know, in WWE's case, they can go, all right, literally the entire wrestling world is doing it. Let's get on board. Let's work. But beef, I don't you make think a good we're that point. far you make away. A beef, you make a good point in saying that if they're sneaky enough that they would just eventually do what Vince, as Ransom said, what Vince did back in the territory days. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty much what they're doing with Evolve. And I don't care how Triple H wants to sugarcoat this. That's what they're doing with Evolve. They're taking their top stars and they're putting them in NXT, which is then moving them over to the main roster. That It's, it's grooming. It's 100%. They're, they're grooming the talent. And and giving Evolve Jack back, uh, or or very little. Like that's not that is not cohesion. That's one hundred percent being a leech. Um, I, I, Symbiosis. You know, I, I don't think we're that. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we're that far off from this kind of a combination presenting a real problem for WWE. Uh, the um, the ratings were in real quick. Uh, AEW drew 913,000 views uh, without promoting Sting, without promoting this like sudden like impact invasion or what have you. Like all the people knew is that there was a title match, um, and and that we were guaranteed a good card. Uh, Tony Khan's been hinting at some stuff for weeks, but nothing real like you know, hey, this is coming. So 913,000 viewers turned in to, yeah, tuned in. Uh, for not a lot of promise, we got a title change, and we got the debut of Sting, and we got a, a promise of, a, of, a, of an honest to God crossover. I think that that's going to draw more people. Raw this week drew 1.7 million viewers, and I know that sounds like it's a big difference, but if AEW can crest a million viewers on a reasonable and reliable scale, if they get to like 1.1, 1.2 they're not that much far off than Raw. And that, that's a problem. That's a problem for WWE to even be in, having that conversation with USA. 
when USA is saying, oh, how is TNT getting these ratings with AEW whenever we should be getting them for Raw? Like, and, and again, apples, oranges, different nights. But like, I think we're in that conversation. Uh, and, and I'm going to fucking repeat the same thing I've been saying for the last two years. We are in a very exciting time for wrestling right now. And with, with, with what AEW is doing now, it's become even more so. Look, before we move on, and I know we want to get this stuff to champs, I just want to echo back to something that Poot said. I agree 100% with Poot when he says this crossover all depends on when Vince McMahon goes. Because Triple H can say whatever he wants to on those calls about WWE being open to working with whoever and sharing talent and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, that is all going to funnel to Vince. Even if it's happening on NXT, that, that permission slip, that hall pass has to have Vince McMahon's signature on it. Mm -hmm. And with Vince McMahon being so wrapped up in his own world, in his own universe, I, 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 don't, I don't see it happening. Evolve is a different story. Like you said, Beef, it's more of a feeder system for WWE. And I don't think AEW is going to play those games. And I definitely don't think Impact is going to play those games with WWE because now Impact has an honest-to-God relationship with AEW. So I don't think that they need to have that relationship with WWE. And these, these other companies, once they start seeing the talent sharing going on between other brands, their response to that's going to be, oh, it seems to be working. That's interesting. Let's get in on that. And if WWE is just going to want some other brand to be a feeder system for them, they're not going to buy into it. They're not going to give a WWE opportunities with their main talent, and WWE gives them Buckus or an opportunity with a low mid Carter. That's just not going to fly. And I don't think you're really going to see top-tier collaboration between WWE and any other legit promotion out there while Vince McMahon is still at the helm. Because it's Vince McMahon's world, it's Vince McMahon's universe, and none of these other promotions, none of these other brands matter. And until, until one of these other brands starts to matter to the networks, Vince McMahon's going to pay it in no mind. When Vince McMahon is out of the picture, yes, I agree with Poot again, that's a completely different story. I think Triple H will see the benefit in collaborating um, tier talent to tier talent. I, I think he has the... I think he has the wise sense to say, hey, if we share our top guys and they share their top guys, that benefits both of us. But I struggle to see that happening while Vince McMahon is still at the helm of the WWE universe. Well, and the problem, too, is timing. Because if AEW gets in bed with NWA and Impact and fucking New Japan and Ring of Honor... Uh, WWE is going to be like, okay, we're ready to collaborate with nobody. Okay, Do great. Yeah, because they're going to miss the, boat, gonna all the boats leaving yep. and the fog's coming. Yep, yep. So that's that's important to uh, know as well. Hey, so we could go on for a couple more hours, but let's do a stump the chumps here. We actually have something uh, not from the Maniac this week. Uh, I'm sorry, yes. Is? He did, but oh. Maniac, with all due respect... We're going to jump yours for a minute, and we're going to jump on to a question coming to us from Zack Snyder. Okay. And uh, he right. writes, Hi, P3 guys. I'm going to try my first question with what I hope is a tough one. Name the competitors, winners, and each match in each bracket of the Brawl for All. Hint, oh. there is a first round Second round, semifinal, and final round. Ransom and Poot stay off Wikipedia. No cheating. What? Not sure how you get some of these answers, but it comes. But it seems kind of sus. First oh. of all, first oh. of all, how fucking oh. dare you? I do a lot of the fucking heavy lifting here, so for me not wow. to be part of the sus. Look at this guy. That's hurtful. That's hurtful. Well, and, all right. And two, two. They use the word sus. Who is this person? 
and have we come across them in Among Us? I don't know, man. Uh, Zack Snyder. Is, I think I think that, that might be a Clearfield hat. I think, right? Zack Snyder. I have. I don't know any Zack well, Snyder, so look, I'm out. All right. Let's start. Let's start just by naming the competitors. I know. Well, all listen, right. to, hold on. Wait. Before we go into that, we need to first determine how many people started out in the first bracket, so we know how many people we need to name. Hold on. I'm putting a, I'm putting a tournament together right now. So, first round, second round, semifinal. First round, second round. Se- oh, no, they're okay. Wow, so that would be 16. Unless there were buys given. That I don't think there were any buys in Brawl for All. Uh, no. Sure is correct here. Uh, uh... I thought for sure it was eight, but... Um, first round, second round. No, yeah, that would be there. There, there would have to be four separate rounds. Uh, boy, this is this may be the one, fellas. I mean, this is asking a lot. To be fair, this 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 is asking a lot. It, it, like, not just who were the competitors, or who was the win, right, and who was the like, winner. What were the matchups? The orders. Th- that's a certain point. Well, it's one of those things, the increasing difficulty, eventually it's going to get you just because it's going to be a wild impossibility. Like saying, from the very beginning of the WWF championship, name every single champion in order and who they won it from. Like, in what match they won it from. You know what I mean? Like Right. I'll right. tell you what. We will, uh, we'll, we'll take our best shot, and if we get... I think I think that we can judge fairly uh, that 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 if we get close enough to the, the 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 you know the bulk of a right answer, I think we'll take that. Um, okay, but we'll right, see. Now, let's 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 start out with this. Whoever this, what's his face? What's his name? Zach Zack Snyder. Snyder. Okay, well, Zach Snyder. Wait a minute! Isn't isn't Zach Snyder the guy who did Justice League? D- the, the Justice Pod. We're now the Justice Cat. Justice Driver. That's our new name. We're the Justice Driver Podcast. The Justice Driver Podcast. Uh, Hashtag Justice um, for Justice Driver. Jokes That's on you. That's by DC. Jokes on you, Zack Snyder. Because just within like the past couple weeks, I watched <laughs> of the fucking uh, Dark Side Ransom, of the Ransom, I Rain fucking love Brawl. you. I fucking love you so much. I want yeah. you to know that first and foremost. So jokes on you, Sonny Jim. I fucking uh, <laughs> at least uh, I've got I'm bringing something to the table in this one at least. We're gonna start out with there were 16 competitors who started in the first bracket. I remember that distinctly from Dark Side of the Ring. Yep. Okay. So first bracket, we need to figure out the 16 competitors and then the winners of that bracket. All right. I know oh. I know for a fact that uh uh so Steve Williams track was in it because he name, was right? they thought yes. he was gonna win the whole damn thing. Who? Steve Williams. Yes, yep. Dr. Death. Yep. They, they Steve Williams he, was in it. Bradshaw. Bradshaw because, Bart Gunn, obviously. Yeah, Bradshaw definitely because freaking um what's his face? Vince Russo came up with this idea to embarrass Bradshaw because Bradshaw was talking about he could beat everybody in the locker room in a legit fight. Uh, draws, because he was in Dark Side of the Ring. Draws. Yep. Mark Marrow, because he was a boxing guy. Godfather, um, because yep. he was a fighting guy. Yep. Savio yep. Vega. Savio Vega was in it. Kay. Bob Holly was in it. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Who else? Um, animal, halfway there. No, not Animal. Hawk. Hawk was in it. Um, who is who is um, the other? Oh, uh, uh, Two Cold Scorpio. Scorpio was in it. Uh, one of the Wait. Harris brothers. Oh boy. Um, which eight one? Ball. Skull or eight, eight ball, ball was in it. Was it eight ball? It was eight ball. Yep. Okay. Was Dilo in it? No, no, Dilo was not. Kay. Did we say Steve Blackman? No, we did no. not. Steve, Steve Blackman. Blackman was in it. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, oh, did we say Dan Severn? No, nope. we didn't. He because was in it. 
they didn't they mention something in Dark Side of the Ring about hoping for Steve Williams versus Dan Severn? Yep. Yep. So Severn was in it. The guy with the eye patch, the one one eyed guy, because I remember Corey oh, saying uh, he had the no Quebecer, being the, in it. The one Quebecer. Yeah, fucking uh, Frankenstein, uh, Jean Pierre Lafitte. Is that is that it? Yeah, Quebecer Pierre. Okay. And then uh, one guy that I didn't, I had really no memory of. Wait a minute. Wait until a minute, they wait mentioned a him. No, Brockus. Brockus, because this was like, wasn't this like one of his first things he did and last things he did? Yeah, because I don't, I don't remember him. Fucking Brockus. for anything else in WWE other than that's the fifteen Rock. boys. That's that's fifteen. Run it down. Who do we got? Bart Gunn, Doctor Death, Bradshaw, Draws, Marrow, Godfather, Vega, Holly, Hawk, Scorpio, Eight Ball, Blackman, Blackman, Blackman. Severn, Blackman. Uh, Jean Pierre Lafitte, and uh, Baracus. Uh, one of the Godwins was in it. What was his name? Um, Mario or Phineas? Mark Canterbury. Canterbury. Mark Canterbury. Okay. That's it. So that's that's 16, right? That's the competitors. Yes. Now we need to come up with who fought who and who well, won. Let's work backwards. Let's work backwards. Yes, so we know the final So we know Bart won. The final was Bart Gun Bradshaw. Yep. I remember and that. Bart won that one. Because the knockout so on Bradshaw was legendary. It was gross. So we have the winner of that, and we have the, the final bracket. That one's done. Right. Okay. Yep. So let's work. Let's work backwards. So who did so Bart by Gunn going beat? Off of, who did Bart Gunn beat to get to Bradshaw? Bart Gunn beat the Godfather. And didn't the Godfather beat Williams? Let's let's D no one at a time. No, who did Bart Bradshaw? Gunn. Who did Bradshaw beat? Bradshaw beat Draws. Okay. On the so, dark side of the ring, we they showed clips of that match, and that one was a decision on points, not on a knockout, because Draws specifically said, you know, he should have gotten a point for a takedown and he didn't. Okay. And it wound so up going to Bradshaw. I'm gonna beef. You're gonna be scribe ransom. Your big brain. Let me it. mediate this. Let me mediate this. Okay. So okay. we have the final was Bart Gunn Bradshaw. We're saying, working backwards, Bart Gunn beat the Godfather. Yes. And then Bradshaw beat Draws. Now let's stop yes. there for a second. Same thing. Who did the Godfather beat to get to Bart Gunn? Because I'm pretty sure Bart <sighs> Gunn Oof. beat Williams to get to the semifinals. Because that no. was where it was like, oh shit, this is real. Nope. No, Bart Gunn knocked out Steve Williams. That's because... what I'm saying. Right. No, you said Godfather. No, I know. But, but I said because I said who did the Godfather beat? Because I said I know Bart Gunn knocked out Steve Williams. Okay. okay. So, so who are we going? We're going with Godfather yes. now. Yes. We're going. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're saying that in the second round. Bart beat Doc, uh, Dr. Death, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Bart Gunn so who did Godfather it. beat in yes. the second round to get to, beat. to Bart? God. Let's skip this one because okay. I'm a little fuzzy on this Okay. One. Put a pin in that. Let's go up. Who did Bradshaw beat to get to draws? Bradshaw beat... Bradshaw beat Mark Merrow. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Now, yep. let's write that down because we can switch these around any way we want. Who did Draws beat to get to Bradshaw? Uh, draws. Let me work my way back here. Draws. Did he beat Bart? Beat, or did, no, not Bart Gunn. Uh, uh, Bob Hawley. Did he beat Bob Hawley? No, Bart Gunn beat Bob Holly because that was Bart Gunn and Bob Holly was the first round. What? Th don't get there yet. Well, actually, so no, we could finish, right. but we could finish uh, Bart Gunn's line. Let's not. Wait, it's right. it's, it's going to confuse me. Okay. Okay. Let's stick with where we were at. Where we we were at? Who draws? Yes. Draws. Who, who did, did draws, draws beat to get beat? to Bradshaw? Draws went over. 
uh, no, not not Scorpio. Um, shit. Uh, draws beat over Savio Vega with points, not with a knockout. How? <laughs> in the semis? Yes. It, okay. Wait, no, no. Well, in no, the this second is the round. second second bracket. Be- oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes. Okay, so let's stop for a second. Let me run it back. Uh, no, what? Why am I running it back? I know Bradshaw, Done. Bart okay. Gunn, Beef. What do we have after that? All right. So here's. So I'm. I'm gonna start from the stop. Bart Gunn won. Finals. Bart versus Bradshaw. Semifinals. Bart versus Godfather. Bradshaw versus Draws. Second round. Bart versus Doctor Death. Question mark versus Godfather. Bradshaw versus Marrow. Vega versus Draws. Wait. Okay. Who's our yes. question mark? Question mark is Godfather, is Godfather in the second Scorpio. round. Okay. So we're going to put Scorpio. Okay. Now, again. So God, yeah. Godfather allow me. over Scorpio. So, okay. We're there. So. Now we're moving on to the first round. The bracket. first round. Who right. did Godfather beat to get to Scorpio? Now, I, here's the rub. Godfather, and I remember this. This was, again, in freaking Dark Side of the Ring. Suck it, whatever your name is, guy. Zack Snyder. Yeah. Godfather lost to Dan Severn in the first round. Did Dan Severn... How Godfather Godfather advanced was, according to this documentary, Dan Severn was worried that this brawl for all was going to delegitimize him as a legit UFC fighter. So he withdrew from the tournament That's right. after beating the Godfather in the first round, which then advanced the Godfather by default to the second round. That's right. Okay, so let's let's stop there. So we're saying Godfather beat Dan Severn. Now who nope. did Scor- Dan Severn beat Godfather? No, yes, yes, yes. Right, okay. but but the first round matchup is correct. Right. Okay. So who did Scorpio, Scorpio. beat to get to Godfather? Was it Hawk? Right, so who didn't advance? Hawk didn't right, so advance. Here, Eight balls so, so didn't here the, advance. So, yeah. So, so here are the names that we have not mentioned yet as not advancing. Uh, Hawk. Eight ball. Blackman. Lafayette. Baracus. Canterbury. Okay. Um... Okay. I'm going to say it was eight ball that fought Versus Scorpio. Scorpio? What? Yes. And Scorpio Why? won that one. Oh, wait a minute. I was going to say, I was going to argue with you over Road Warrior Hawk. But didn't Hawk and Draws fight in the first round? It would make sense because they're they, they were the LOD guys. Yeah. Yes, they fought in the first round. Okay, and that okay. one, that let's stick with that one then. So that one was the only one, I believe, in this entire tournament that ended in a draw. Okay. How they determined that draws would advance, I don't know. I don't know if Hawk got hurt, but that was the only one in this tournament that ended in a draw. Okay. So Hawk versus who? Pew draws. Draws. Yeah. Yep. Ending in a draw. Okay. So who did Vega beat to get the draws? We would have Blackman, Lafayette, uh, Lafitte, uh, Baracus, and Canterbury. Wait, so who are we on now? Vega. 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 Savia Vega. I guess I guess we haven't technically put Bob Hawley in the match with Bart Gunn in the first round, but being you guys were, 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 were very certain of it, I kind of penciled it in. Yeah, put that in there because okay. that was, again, thank you to this documentary. Did... That was another one that they touched on because Bart Gunn said that he didn't believe he believed that the brackets were fixed. Jesus Christ, we have this fucking set, but for four people, fucking mm-hmm. ransom and poot. This is all on you guys. I'm just sitting here writing names. All, all, all I knew was that Bart Gunn won. So who, here we are. are. Okay, wait. I'm getting confused. Who are we on? Well, we got in uh, Bart Savia Bart Vega. Gunn and Bob Howe. Okay, so we're on that yes. one. 
Yes. Did vet? Um, <sighs> say that again, Poot. I got a text and it interrupted it. Your no, speech. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think because my mind <sighs> now. Because what are the four names we have left? Blackman, uh, Pierre Lafayette, Lafitte, whatever you want to call him, Baracus, and Canterbury. I. My gut is saying Brockus. I yeah, feel, uh, but I think that's it's right. Brockus or Mark Canterbury. So no, I'm thinking it's... Canterbury was probably with Bradshaw because they're both big dudes, and they probably tried to stay as close to weight classes as they could. Oh, they were doing this legit. Well, according to according to freaking Dark Side of the Ring, all the names were picked randomly out of a hat. Oh, okay. Well, Mark then Gunn doesn't my point. believe that though. So you might have a salient point. Bart Gunn didn't believe that it was. Well, random. some of he these things, it was like we're saying, draws and Hawk were together. That seems a little fixy. Right. Sure. Right. Just like well, Bob Holly and Bart Gunn at the time were the Midnight Express. Yup. Right. And after Bart Gunn beat Bob Holly, they had a tag match on the next Raw as and, the Midnight Express. And didn't didn't like Bob Holly like fall asleep on Bart Gunn's couch and it was really awkward. No, they shared a hotel room together. Oh, that's and right. And Bart Gunn said that it was a little awkward because they shared a car, they shared a hotel room, and they really didn't talk a whole lot that night because they just had a legit fight where Bart Gunn knocked out Bob Holly. All right. Okay. So, so where are we we're at? left with three so slots. So we said Baracus and Vega. Correct. So we have to figure out who faced Dr. Death, who faced Bradshaw, and who faced Marrow. Of those names, we have Jean-Pierre Lafitte, uh, Canterbury and Steve Blackman. I, I think we should go with beef on the Bradshaw Canterbury thing. Yes. I think we should go yeah. with him. Cause yeah, that's I'm fine with that. That's pretty, pretty like non smooth brain thinking. Yeah, that sounds right. And then I think that would then lead the feet to be beaten by Dr. Death. Right, because they tried to give him a clear path to the end zone, and, and it backfired. What better, what what better way to give him a clear path to the end zone by having a funny guy with one eye? Yep. So then that yeah, would leave he always Blackman like a faces man. Blackman facing Marrow, and that does sound plausible. Because Blackman that, Marrow, it's kick basically kickboxing versus boxing boxing. Right, but that was another one where. That was an that was an injury, and I think I think the Hawk draws was a draw, but I think Hawk got injured, which is why draws advanced. They and did the say Mero that there were a bunch Blackman, of le- like big legit injuries in this. There were right. yes. draws or not draws. Um, Marrow Blackman Blackman won that Black, Black, oh. Blackman won that match, but he got hurt. Which is why Mero advanced. Okay. All right. So, so Blackman was so, the winner of that one, but Mero advanced because Blackman got hurt. All right, beef. I'm gonna run it down. I'm, run. I'm gonna run it down start to finish. Bart Gunn, Bob Holly, Bart Gunn won. Uh Lafayette, Lafitte, Dr. Death, Dr. Death won. Scorpio, eight ball, Scorpio won. Severn Godfather. Severn won, withdrew from the tourney, Godfather advanced. Bradshaw, Canterbury, Bradshaw won. Marrow, Blackman, Blackman won, was injured, Marrow took his place. Vega versus versus Brockus, Vega won. Hawk versus Draws, ended in a draw, Draws advanced because of an injury. Second round, Bart versus Dr. Death, Bart won. Scorpio versus Godfather. Godfather won. Bradshaw versus Marrow. Bradshaw won. Vega versus Draws. Draws won. Semifinals. Bart versus Godfather. Bart won. Bradshaw versus Draws. Bradshaw won. Finals. Bart versus Bradshaw. Bart won. Yes. Okay. I'll go with it. All right. Let's fucking see. All right, it's attached in a picture. Okay. All right, so the brackets don't look the same, but we can suss it out. Um, All right, so Blackman 
versus Mero. Hold on. Yeah, so Blackman versus Mero. We were right on. Blackman won. Mero advanced. Canterbury versus Bradshaw. We were right on. Bradshaw advanced. I'm going to circle the ones that we have right here. It's going to get messy. Um, Brockus versus Vega. Vega won. Uh, draws versus Hawk. It was a draw, and draws advanced. Fucking halfway through, and we're nailing no it. Way. No uh, way. Bart Gunn versus Bob Hawley. Bart won. Uh, Quebecer Pierre versus Steve Williams. <laughs> Steve Williams won. Yep. Um, Godfather versus Dan Severn. Severn won, but the Godfather advanced. Eight ball versus Scorpio. Scorpio won. What the fuck? Second round that... matches. Okay, yeah, we got it now. We got we it got right. The first round, we got them all. Go ahead, B. We... Uh, we didn't. We messed up the. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was looking ahead. Sorry. Um, you scared second me. Second round. I know, right? Bradshaw versus Marrow. Bradshaw won. Draws versus Savio. Draws won. Bart versus Steve Williams. Obviously, Bart won. Godfather versus Scorpio. Godfather won. Bradshaw versus Draws. Bradshaw won. Bart versus Godfather. Bart won. Bart versus Bradshaw. Bart won. <laughs> Zack Snyder. <laughs> you may have an unindelible fi uh, film career. But what? what you have not done is you have not stumped the champs. And really quick, let's beef. I know you normally do all the heavy lifting, everyone. Dude, that was 100% that, on Ransom. That Ransom, Ransom called that start to fucking finish. You, thank God that we talked about that the other week and you decided to watch that. Yep. Holy it was shit. That night. It was that night after we talked about it. I put it on after I got my shower. I was laying in bed and I was watching the dark side of the ring. So Jesus it jokes on Zack Snyder because if I hadn't watched that dark side of the ring, I would have gotten a lot less than that. Uh, yeah, uh, that was pretty fucking amazeballs. Um, all, all the same, Zack Snyder, you took your shot, you came at the champs, and you had a hard, hard, hard question. Very involved. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a statement out here. Uh, if we're gonna get more tournament questions, I'm fine with that. But we're not going to do the brackets, no. and we're not going to do the winners of each match. No, it's going to be participants competitors. and who won. We'll name competitors. We will name finals. Hell, we'll even go semifinals. But we're not going to go back, you know, the brackets all the way. That's too much. So that that's yeah, way that's too a much. Statement. And I'm fucking impressed that we did it. But if, hey, if you want to bring a tournament up, you go right ahead. We'll do participants. We'll do the winner. We'll do the finals. We'll do the semifinals. But that's as far back as we'll go. Man, I'm but gonna that have being to. Said, I'm gonna have to go back and do some fucking research. This was like ten star. This, this was fucking minus five stars difficulty level, and fucking ransom just walked out. The per perfect fucking score. So, but I do want to thank Zach for putting it out there, because when we get a question like this and it really tests our knowledge. Like, yes, we revel in the fact that we were able to ace it, but we're really impressed when our listeners can bring up something like this. Serious. So and thank all... you. Yes. Th no. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up, Zach. Please continue to send in questions. Maniac, I promise you we'll get to yours, buddy. You know that we always do. So you keep sending them. And guys and gals out there, if you're listening, you want to get in on this? Like Ransom has said many times in the past, if you stump the champs, you can come on the show for a segment for two hours, whatever you want to do. You can come on the show if you stomp the champs. Also, I want to say it's not just the knowledge that we all have, you know, because we always say Ransom's the WCW guy, Beef's the, like, more, like, sports-minded, you know, usually with, like, orders of champs and, and stuff like that. And I'm the one who has the, uh, the oddball, potpourri, goofy bullshit that I know. <laughs> but... This also speaks to how well we work together 
because Ransom had the knowledge, Beef had the ability to scribe it and keep it all in order, and like I, I like we provided the thought pro- like I provided the thought process of let's start at the end and work our way back versus trying to go okay let's organize all sixteen people and go forward. Yeah, you know. Listen, like- I'll be honest. I didn't think we stood a chance at naming all sixteen people, much less the exact bracketology. Um, we, <laughs> we honestly we fucking nailed it, Ransom. If you hadn't have watched that documentary, would we have been able to do that? No. Uh, I, I, I think, don't think so. Well, we definitely would have gotten the winner. I yes. don't know about the semifinals. Maybe there was a shot in the dark of figuring out all 16 competitors. Right. But to get the first and second round brackets all put together, not a chance. Enough. I never would have remembered Canterbury. Never. Nope. Uh. I don't even know who fucking Baracus is. So. Dude, Baracus, yeah. well, don't yeah, you remember? Like I said, if... If I hadn't watched that Dark Side of the Ring documentary, I wouldn't have known either because, Dude. like Poot said, he was there for a cup of coffee before uh, the freaking Brawl for All, and then after the Brawl for All, I don't. he was gone, I think. I remember I remember the promos for Brockus because— Do you? It, yes. It was, the, it was like the, the precursor Brockus things because he was a big bodybuilder. He was a bodybuilder. Who yeah, that's they, right. they drafted because Vince saw his look and liked it. And like he was bring him in and they put like chains on him. And he like mm-hmm. he was like and I remember because he was like, my name is Brockus and I come up from Deutschland to be the World Wrestling Federation. It was like the goofiest like wow promo. And like it was just like he was a big guy who yelled a lot, you know, that old school 80s early nineties thing where they're just like roided out and screaming. And like, he had one match, I think on like, like either a dark match on raw or like for like a raw night or like it was on like shotgun Saturday night or something. He had one match one and then he was in the brawl for all. And then he was gone. Like poor Brock. And they were like, building him up to be this big monster guy from, from Germany and like nothing came of it. And I remember that was the first time that like my little brain kind of opened up and was like, Hey, where's that guy, that Brockus guy where like they were talking him up for weeks and he's just not here. What, I, what happened? You yeah. know? So I think the thing that I take away the most from the brawl for all is how bad Bart Gunn got screwed over. Oh my God. Because even though they, even you know, the corporate line was, you know, we have all the faith in the world in Dr. Death. We're not worried about anybody beating them. You know, we're not, no one's going to get in trouble if they beat them because we're not worried. You know, we have all the faith in Dr. Death. And then when Bart Gunn beat him, Dr. Death got hurt in that match. I think, I don't know what it was. He got some sort of energy, injury where it was a lengthy recovery. And that pretty much buried Dr. Death's legitimate legitimacy and poor Bart Gunn paid for it because he won the stupid brawl for all and the winner was supposed to have a program with Steve Austin but instead of doing that they brought in fucking Butterbean for Wrestlemania and Butterbean destroyed Bart Gunn That's and so that hard to watch. And, the, and the thing that really it's, breaks it's so hard to watch the thing that yes. breaks your heart too is the fact that Bart Gunn spent like a couple months really training hard like yeah. as like in boxing, like he ate, he, that's all he did like yep. to try and at least hold his own against Butterbean and Butterbean just wiped the floor with him, well, which is crazy I mean, because just, Butterbean's not even really that great of a boxer, <laughs> but, but it's just like CM Punk trying to do MMA and, and you guys know, I love CM Punk and God bless him for jumping out there and trying something different, man, because that's, that's gotta be tough. To yes. midstream, go, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I know that I'm great at this. I want to try and be great at something else. Yep. Um, um, just like John Favreau's character in fucking uh, Friends when he jumped to the UFC too. Um, but but that being said, um, you know, kudos to Bark on, and you know, fucking WWE screwed themselves on this because they they should have known that you can't book a legit fucking tournament, no matter how much you want to. You know, shit's gonna happen that you can't plan for. 
And for them oh, yeah. to bring in a, a, a career guy who had been fucking boxing his entire career versus a guy who, you know, he's really trying hard, but you can't, you cannot replicate those, no. especially because Bart Gunn had been a fucking wrestler his whole life. Yeah, it, it was just not fair, and it was fucking tough to watch, and it was fucking 100% Vince McMahon back there fucking laughing having a yuck about it. Yeah, and, you know, what I find to be the real travesty in and of, of it is WWE promoted this as, you know, they wanted their mid-card guys in it. They didn't want top-tier talent. They wanted mid-card guys who could break out and, you know, show off and become big guys. And freaking Bart Gunn, and I hate WWE for this, they're always talking about, you know, you've got to reach out, you've got to grab that brass ring, you've got to grab that brass ring and run with it. Bart Gunn did exactly that. Bart Gunn was a mid-tier guy, he was a smoking guns guy, then he was in the stupid uh, new Midnight Express, the- and he grabbed that, yeah, he grabbed that brass ring, he's like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot, I'm going to work hard, and if I win, I get this program with Steve Austin, It'll propel my career. And he did. Uh, he did. He made it the whole way through, legit. But instead of delivering on their promise of reaching up and grabbing that brass ring, which is exactly what Bart Gunn did, he took a chance. They put him up against Butterbean, knowing full well Butterbean was going to destroy him. And then Bart Gunn got buried and let go. So, you know, for them to say, oh, you have to just you know, reach out and grab that brass ring, this is a prime example of that is bullshit. Because Bart Gunn did exactly that. He did it by the book. He didn't break any rules. He didn't do anything shady. And he got buried for it. And Where, for all intents and purposes, he should have been elevated. And he should have faced Steve Austin. And at least been given that chance to be a breakout star. But they never gave him that shot. And, and... Bart Gunn had, had, had zero matches with Steve Austin. I'm sorry, Poot. I, I really am. But it pisses me off. Because Bart Gunn did everything right. He took that leap of faith. And instead of being rewarded for his efforts, he was punished. I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, no, and and you have every right to be mad. And I think it's true because Bart Gunn is uh, part of the whole litany of people that those kind of things have happened to. It just seems like his is the most, because it was real, it was. Yes. Is yes. one of the most egregious. Like, yes. And, and, and Bart Gunn. Was he going to set the world on fire? No offense to, to Bart, but probably not. But he had all the tools. He looked great. He was mm-hmm. solid in the ring. And, you know, I, 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 there was no reason that it couldn't have worked. And he couldn't have had a better place in the annals of WWE history. Uh, and and yep. we could... That's... And I'm 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 not trying to be a buzzkill. If you guys have other no, things good. to say, please. But nope. we're going long in the tooth, and I think that discussion uh, of uh, wrestlers that got screwed over, like Bart Gunn, is that for another podcast? Yes, agreed. Agreed. Burrito, what's up? In a handsome, delicious uh, cocoon. I am going to do that, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank you for listening to this episode of the Pittsburgh Tro- Pile Drop 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 Let me try yes. it again. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for listening to this episode of the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. Uh, and we want to make sure, uh, first off, to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Mr. Casual Gaming, Sta- uh, Gaming Dad himself, Mr. Tiger. Oh. <laughs> Bomb Tom. Me. And his page, Casual Gaming Dad, over on Facebook. Do yourself a favor, join Casual Gaming Dad's corner over there. And also on YouTube and Twitch, look him up. He's Casual Gaming Dad84. Watch his streams. He is so much fun to watch. He plays a lot of great games. And also, watch his Among Us streams because we participate in that. And I get really angry. And Ransom turns into a cartoon character. And Beef tells people he's not finished yet. And it's just an overall great time. Um, and, uh, also, uh, I'm working on editing the new episodes, but for some reason I'm having some trouble. Make sure to check out, uh, the, uh, Tone Bros podcast I do with my buddy. It's all about guitar gear and music and stuff. And it's a lot of fun if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, and, uh, also we want to thank Mr. Sean Tischler, uh, and his work with IWC and Clearfield. Hopefully we can, and the central Pennsylvania area, really, uh, hopefully he can, uh, 
get back to helping them out and hopefully uh, more indie shows will kind of come to light if we can get this COVID thing under control. Here's hopefully to a better 2021 uh, and we can get independence back and make sure folks when they do open back up, support your local independent promotion because that is where you see future stars. It's absolutely true. Uh, so make sure you do that as well. And also go on over to our Facebook page, give us a like, um, and, uh, give us a subscribe here on YouTube and ring that bell as day like to say, uh, and if you have any suggestions for, um, uh, questions, if you have any questions you want to submit, make sure to email them to Pittsburgh pile driver podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you either put the question in one email and the answer in a separate one, or put a lot of line breaks between the two. Cause we don't want to have anything spoiled. We need all three or four of Tom's here, uh, to, uh, to answer those questions. We need all, all, all three or four brains, because if it's just two of us, <laughs> the um things could go south really quick but please <laughs> make sure you do that thank you very much to Zack snyder for sending in that question it was a doozy uh you just kind of picked your shot wrong place wrong time ransom came in and just super kicked the hell out of that question so thank you for that <laughs> ransom uh and also if i could throw it there as well just because a little bit of shameless self-promotion. I started doing Poop the Bard videos again. I have my own YouTube channel where I play video games and such. And I just started yeah. a playthrough of Hollow Knight. Um, and it's a blast. And go check it out and check out the back catalog as well. And one last thing for burrito time. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a breaking, uh, not breaking kayfabe, for a collar elbow tie-up, which is a show we did. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel as well. Also on Anchor. It's basically... Uh, 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 point counterpoint argument, uh, debate, uh, thing that we do. If you have any suggestions for that, like for example, the first episode, uh, was myself and beef arguing was WrestleMania nine any good. And if you go back and listen, I handily won that one. Um, but, uh, you know, and I got super wrecked cause I didn't realize the alcohol content of the beers that I was drinking. Uh, <laughs> that was the best part. Oh, and, and <laughs> oh, I had a couple beers in me as well. It was a lot of fun, but like, uh, make sure you check that out. And if you have any suggestions for that, again, email it to us at Pittsburgh pile driver podcast at gmail.com <laughs> for Mr. Alec Ransom, Mr. Tiger bomb, Tom, myself, put the bard, baby, and your reigning. Defending undisputed choo choo chooser weight champion, Mr. Beef the Legend. Have a great night, bitches. No button ransom? Balls deep. <laughs>